Welcome to Transport Vlog. My name is Paul and I'm outside the entrance to Wynyard Station on George Street. And on the other side of George Street will be one of the entrances to the new Hunter Street Station as part of Sydney Metro West. And that is what this video is all about. So Hunter Street will be the Sydney CBD terminus for Sydney Metro West. The whole line from Westmead to Hunter Street will be underground and there will be nine stations in total. The new Sydney Metro tunnels will go under Wynyard Station and then continue under Pitt and Hunter Streets. The island platform will be here and this will link to a western station building with entrances on George Street and Hunter Street and to an eastern station building with an entrance on O'Connell Street. Throughout this video I'm going to refer to these new station buildings as Hunter Street Station West and Hunter Street Station East. This is how Hunter Street Station West will look. Notice the heritage building on the corner of George Street and Hunter Street. Well that's staying. And here is this heritage building. The lime coloured office block next to it along with the concrete building on the other side and the shops below will be going along with the Hunter Connection shopping mall and then two further buildings including this one with the black and red windows. Now of all the buildings going the Hunter Connection is the one that will probably be the most sadly missed so I'm going to start with that. The Hunter Connection opened in 1982 and is on three floors with the first floor being the food court and the other two levels containing a variety of other businesses. It has entrances on George Street, Hunter Street, a link from Pitt Street and an underground entrance from Wynyard Station, which is where I'm going to start. Stairs and escalators lead down to an underground concourse and retail area and then go on to the Hunter Connection. This opened in December 2019 and was part of a major upgrade to Wynyard Station, which also included these six new escalators to George Street. Now on this new underground concourse, and with the pandemic and less people in the city, it has taken a while for all the new retail outlets to be occupied, but by the later part of 2022, everything had opened and this area had become quite busy, especially at lunchtime. The upgrade included adding these two lifts, that provide step-free access to the Wynyard Station concourse above, and also to George Street, which is handy for light rail, and to Wynyard Lane and Carrington Street as well. So this lower concourse will stay and become part of the underground link to the new Hunter Street station. And this concourse goes to the George Street Tunnel, which currently goes to the Hunter Connection and will in future go to the new Hunter Street station. Here is this tunnel again on the map, and it seems that the westbound Metro Tunnel will be about 25 metres below it. So with this becoming a key connection between the new Hunter Street Station West concourse and the existing Wynyard Station, I reckon these stairs will become escalators and if further escalators are required then this Locali store would have to go. Now heading towards the tunnel under George Street. It was refurbished during 2019 and reopened with this new concourse in December of that year. At the moment there are no plans to widen this tunnel but I'm hoping that will change because otherwise it could get very congested once the new Hunter Street Station opens. This tunnel will continue to be in an unpaid area so pedestrians can use it. Passengers will need to tap off and tap on again between the two stations. The tunnel leads directly to the lower floor of the Hunter Connection. This was filmed in early December 2022 and by this time many businesses had already relocated. The nail salon on the right was still open but all other outlets on this side had already closed down. And a few days later the nail salon closed its doors for the very last time as well. On the other side, this alteration store was opened in early December, but then closed its doors two weeks later. This lift wasn't working, but when it did, it went directly to the 5 Hunter Street office block above. To the left of the lift are some stairs that go up to Hunter Street. The canopy marking the entrance on Hunter Street looks like something from a glitzy 80s nightclub. Anyway, as there are no bouncers, it's straight back down the escalator to the lower level. This massage parlour, adjacent to the escalator I just came down, is still open. On the 29th of November, this coffee shop was still doing its daily grind, but when I returned on the 5th of December, it had closed with everything removed. And the only other business still open on the lower level was Taru Cuts. It was very sad seeing all these closed retail outlets, even with the Christmas decorations above, and for some businesses, this may be the end of the road, whilst others have found new premises. Escalators and stairs lead to the middle floor, which is over on the left, while straight ahead is a connection to Pitt Street. On this passageway that goes to Pitt Street, all the retail outlets are open, and as you can see, it's busy, and that's because this is staying, and it might even link to the new Hunter Street station in the future. 
This passageway is at 109 Pitt Street, and you can see how this could lead into the future Hunter Street Station West concourse. Now for the middle floor, which can be accessed via these stairs. This dry cleaning and alteration shop was still open on the 29th of November, but a week later it had closed down too. And if you didn't pick up your dry cleaning in time, then here is their new location. Most of the other outlets on this level have now closed, with both Master Specs and Sydney Barbers relocating to premises within Wynyard Station. This exit leads to Demestra Place and then to George Street. It's the only road access to the Hunter Connection, and it's also where the smokers hang out. The loading area is so small that a turntable is required. Imagine shiny new escalators and lifts replacing this rather unwelcoming area. I think it's time to run back inside. When the Hunter Connection opened in 1982, it quickly became popular, with the underground passageways providing quick and convenient access to Pitt Street and Hunter Street without crossing roads or waiting for traffic lights. And of course the foot traffic was great for the many shops that were along these passageways. When the Hunter Connection closes in 2023, it will have been here for over 40 years. This tobacco store is the last shop standing, and I reckon it will be here until the bitter end. Now continuing towards Hunter Street, and Soul Origin on the right closed down in September, and like the lower level, this floor has become very quiet. Here are some more notices for shops that have closed or relocated on this level. I'm getting a little hungry now, and I can smell the food from here. Time to head up to the upper level. I don't think this escalator will ever run again, so it's up the stairs. Of course, one thing a 40-year-old shopping centre doesn't have is step-free access. In late November, the upper level food court was still very popular, and I filmed this around lunchtime so you can see it at its busiest. Some of the food outlets had already closed, including these two on the left. Access to the upper level food court from the Pitt Street link is up these stairs, and like on the other side, I don't think this escalator will ever run again. In late November, it was still busy enough for people to be fighting for chairs, and with many outlets already closed, there were large queues for the ones that were still trading. It reminds me of queuing up for school dinners. And this is the exit that leads to George Street, via an enclosed walkway. And here is some more footage of the busiest part of this food court. If you have fond memories of having your lunches here, do share this in the comments below. These food courts, run by independent businesses and providing low-priced, tasty Asian and Indian food, seem to be dying out in Sydney, and it will be a shame to see this one go. Now, I don't normally take pictures of food, and you probably don't need to see this either. It has a small outside area overlooking Hunter Street, so I went to check it out. These outdoor tables are extremely popular, so if you can get one, take some time to enjoy the views. Three of the food outlets have already found new homes, and Bangkok Wok had this lovely note of gratitude and appreciation. All remaining food outlets closed on Friday the 16th of December, except for Taste of Beijing. By early January 2023, these posters had appeared in various locations within the Hunter Connection. The early half of 2023 is quite vague, but with so few businesses remaining, I reckon it will close in January or February. So it's still possible to enjoy the food court, as long as you like the food served by the Taste of Beijing, as this is now your only option, and you might need to queue. The Hunter Connection has this passageway that provides a shortcut between Hunter Street and George Street. The passageway starts at these stairs, and you are greeted with lots of signs for massages. And all of these signs are directing you to one of these two massage parlours on the left. Once around the corner and heading for George Street, all the remaining businesses seem to have scarpered, including Kudos Bank, which used to occupy this area on the left. But there are still plenty of massage signs. Now accessing the Hunter Connection via the enclosed path that leads to the food court. And there is an extra level that very few people know about. And it's up these escalators. You're only likely to come here if you have a P.O. box, and lots of people do. And according to this sign, all the P.O. boxes will be relocated to another location in January. So that's the Hunter Connection. Are you happy or sad to see it go? Let me know in the comments. I'll now cover the other buildings that will be demolished along George Street and Hunter Street. Many of these are above the Hunter Connection. I'll start at this location on George Street. The gap between these two buildings is where Hunter Street Station West will end. 
So this means that this building on the right, which is the Merivale owned Ivy Entertainment precinct with many lively bars, clubs and a pool on top is staying. But this six storey office block with the St George Bank branch below it will be going. This is 314 to 318 George Street and it wasn't owned by St George, it was actually owned by Westpac and they have been trying to sell it for several years. It was built in the late 1960s so is now over 50 years old. The St George branch had closed by December 2022 but the lights are on inside the building above it so I guess this is still being used. Between the Hunter Connection and the old St George Bank branch is Jimmy's Falafel. Jimmy's Falafel is very popular, especially at lunchtimes and in the evenings, and it's owned by Merivale, so I'm sure it will find a new home, maybe just down the road in the Ivy Complex. Above Jimmy's Falafel is a three-storey white building, which doesn't seem to have any windows. This is 312 George Street. Actually, it does have some windows, but they are on the back overlooking the dodgy part of the Hunter Connection that you saw earlier. According to the urban developer, linked to the article in the description, Maryvale planned to purchase both 312 and 314 to 318 George Street so they could extend the Ivy site further, so I guess that won't be happening now. To the left of the Hunter Connection is the George Street Medical Centre and a tab betting shop. This is how it looked in March 2022. By December 2022, the tab shop had closed. Next was the old QDOS Bank branch and then the Hunter Connection passageway to Hunter Street that you saw earlier. And above all of these is this rather drab concrete office block, which has its entrance on Hunter Street, so I'll come back to this one soon. This lime coloured office building is at 300 George Street and is known as Watson House. It has 14 floors in total, including the ground retail level. It was completed in 1964. Sydney's CBD Dental used to occupy the retail outlet on the right, with Easy Mart continuing to use this one on the left. The Watson House entrance is between these two shops, so let's take a look inside. This was the list of the building occupants in March, and by the 5th of December only 7 remained, and by the 30th of December it was down to 4. So the lime coloured Watson House will probably close early in 2023, which means that Easy Mart will go too, but this lovely building on the corner of George Street and Hunter Street will be staying. This building is the former Skinner's Family Hotel and it will be within the construction site area, so it will be lovingly looked after by Sydney Metro whilst Hunter Street Station West is built around it. This three-storey building was designed by Henry Robertson and it became heritage listed in 1999. It was built in 1846 and for many years it was a pub. And for the last few years it's been an optometrist shop, but they moved out in June 2021 and it's one of the few remaining old colonial regency buildings remaining in Sydney. Other buildings of this style include the Lord Nelson and the Hero of Waterloo within the rocks. Now on Hunter Street and next to the former Skinner's Family Hotel is this very uninspiring concrete office block that dates back to 1975. At street level, this building, which is 5 Hunter Street, overlaps with the Hunter Connection, with the passageway to George Street just here, a retail outlet next to it, which used to be Daiso Japan, and then the entrance to 5 Hunter Street. And then below the Leader House sign are the stairs down to the lower floor of the Hunter Connection. This building has 11 floors, including the street level, and continues behind the lime green Watson House building to George Street, so it's basically over part of the Hunter Connection. Let's see who is still in the building. Wow, it's still pretty full and that surprised me, so I checked their websites and Google Maps as you do and discovered that most businesses had already moved out. Now for the final building that will be demolished to make way for the Western Station concourse and entrances and it's this more modern white coloured building at 9 Hunter Street. As you can see it also sits on top of the Hunter Connection. It's quite a lot taller than the other two office buildings and has 19 floors, with 17 being used for offices. I believe this building was completed in the early 1980s, opening at the same time or shortly after the Hunter Connection. If you know exactly when 9 Hunter Street opened, then do share this in the comments. At street level is the entrance to the Hunter Connection, and to the left of it is the entrance to 9 Hunter Street and the Hunter House Cafe. And on the level above is the Hunter Connection food court balcony that you saw earlier, and more of the Hunter House Cafe. Let's take a look inside. In March, all 17 floors were occupied, and by September it was down to 13 floors, and by December it was just three. Oh no, the Hunter House Cafe has already closed down, and I was really looking forward to having a coffee here.
So this was the Hunter House Cafe, and it was quite a trendy place to hang out with great coffee and some interesting food options. And it had a very impressive ceiling, which added to its appeal. It was open the week before, so I reckon it closed on the 9th of December. They appear to be looking for new premises, and I wonder if they'll take the ceiling with them. 9 Hunter Street is the final building to be demolished to make way for the new Hunter Street Station West building. And it closed its doors for the final time at the end of December 2022, and it will be interesting to see how they go about demolishing it, especially as this distinctive lime and cream building next to it is staying. And this building is Pangas House, and it's at 15 to 17 Hunter Street, and in the future Hunter Street Station West will be its new neighbour. It's currently the home of the Sydney City Comfort Hotel, and I believe this building is heritage listed. So this building, and the other buildings between this one and Pitt Street, will be staying. Besides having an entrance on George Street, Hunter Street Station West will also have an entrance on Hunter Street, which will probably be just east of the former Skinner's Hotel building. There will also be a second entrance on George Street that is closer to the Wynyard Light Rail stop. So that would be around here, the existing Ivy building would be just south of this entrance. And looking from where this entrance will be, you can see that it's pretty close to the Wynyard Light Rail stop. Access via Pitt Street is also being considered, including the existing retail passageway that currently goes to the Hunter Connection, and a possible new one further north. With the help of this and another Sydney Metro animated video, I'm going to give you a virtual tour. So coming in from George Street, these escalators that run in a southerly direction lead to the concourse below. Passengers from Hunter Street will probably come in from the right and use the same escalators. The Opal Gates will be on this level, along with the underground link to Wynyard Station via the existing George Street Tunnel. Now into the paid area, and just here will be two lifts, which along with these escalators that are facing north, will go to a passageway that sits above the island platform and continues to the Hunter Street Station East concourse. This passageway will have several escalators that lead to the island platform below. Being a terminating station, the island platform allows passengers to easily board the train that is departing first. A special thank you to Sydney Metro for allowing me to use these two videos. Links to both videos are in the description, with one appearing on the top right now. So to summarise, these escalators will take passengers to the concourse below, where the opal gates will be. I've only shown two escalators, but there will actually be four or five, and the underground link from Wynyard Station will come out at this same level. Then further escalators will go to what I'm going to call the platform concourse, and these lifts will go to the platform concourse as well. Then several sets of escalators and two lifts will lead to the island platform below. And the platform concourse will also link to the Hunter Street Station Eastern Concourse, and then on to Martin Place Metro and Train Station. More on this shortly. Now this is the current plan, and it could well change between now and when Hunter Street Station opens in 2030. I'm now going to cover Hunter Street Station East, starting with the existing buildings that will be demolished on O'Connell Street, Hunter Street and Bly Street. Which is basically these three high-rise office blocks, including the street-level retail outlets that are part of these buildings. This heritage building behind me is at 16 to 18 O'Connell Street, and in the future its new neighbour will be the Hunter Street Station East building. It was built in 1940 and was originally a banking chamber with offices above. It has been known as Delphin House and the Bank of New South Wales House in the past. Notice the imposing pink granite archway that marks the original entrance. Its neighbour is currently this Sydney Metro shed that is part of one of three Martin Place station construction sites. And it's used to transport equipment and materials including track to the metro tunnels and to the other Martin Place construction sites, and also for mixing concrete. Once all the materials are in place, this site, which is currently part of Sydney Metro City and South West, will transfer to Sydney Metro West, and become part of the Hunter Street Station East construction site. And before the Metro Shed were these two buildings. Do you remember them? They were 20 and 22 O'Connell Street. The next building is 28 O'Connell Street, and this is the first of three office buildings that will be demolished. And this building is also where the main entrance to Hunter Street Station East will be. 28 O'Connell Street has 14 floors, including the street level, and continues around the corner into Hunter Street. It was built in 1972. And here is how this building looks from Hunter Street. Now back on O'Connell Street, and on the left is the entrance to the underground parking, with the building entrance next to it. 
let's see who is still here. The occupants list didn't change between March and December, so I did some more research, and here is my version. Only three companies remain, with the most exciting one being the Duality Pole Dancing Company. They were moved to Surrey Hills in January. Next to the entrance was a cafe called The White Rabbit, and their premises continued around the corner into Hunter Street. I say was, because it closed at the start of the 2021 Covid lockdown, and has never reopened. The White Rabbit is still in business, with several other cafes in the Sydney suburbs. Now on Hunter Street, and on the left, was the entrance to the Little Academics Childcare Centre, which was opened in March, but had closed by December. It occupied the first floor of the 28 O'Connell Street building. And to the right of it was Rainbow Florists. They were still trading in March, but had closed by December. The second office building that will be going is next to Rainbow Florists at 48 Hunter Street. It has 13 floors, including the ground level, and opened in 1961. It's sandwiched between 28 O'Connell Street, which is on the left, and another office block at 37 Bly Street, on the right. Here is the entrance. Let's see who is still in this building. So according to this, all floors were still occupied, but a little googling revealed that only four businesses remained. And they had all moved out by the end of December, with 48 Hunter Street closing its doors forever. To the right of the entrance was the Nook Cafe, which occupied the ground floor. It was still open in March, which is when I recorded this. I'm in the Nook coffee shop having a nice coffee, a nice cappuccino, and this is going to be demolished as part of Sydney Metro West. The Nook Cafe closed on the 30th of July, but they did find a new home on Kent Street. The third and final office building to go is this one on the right. It has 14 floors and continues to Bly Street, which is where the building entrance is. The address is 37 Bly Street, and it was completed in 1973. This building has five retail tenancies on Hunter Street, including one that has quite a reputation. Frankie's Pizza closed on Sunday the 11th of December, which was exactly 10 years after it opened. It survived the lockout laws, the Covid pandemic, but the new Sydney metro station became its downfall. It was next to the Nook Cafe, and it certainly wasn't your typical pizza restaurant. As these posters reveal, it was a live music venue that could hold up to 400 people, and it was in the basement of the 37 Bly Street office building. And it had many old post ads around the entrance. This was on Tuesday the 13th of December, so two days after they closed. Luckily, the main doors were open as they were clearing things out, so I was able to get a few clips. It's a very colourful entrance with all the photos. And with the aftermath of one last really good party. And as I look at these clips, an early song by Snow Patrol pops into my head. It's called, When It's All Over, We Still Have To Clear Up. All businesses that are forced to move do get assistance in finding a new home, and moving and refitting costs are covered by Sydney Metro, so Frankie's Pizza could pop up again in a new location. Next to Frankie's Pizza was a Malay and Chinese restaurant, which at lunch times was pretty busy. They closed in early December, and after 35 years at this location, they found a new place near Circular Quay, and then Kotu that served Sri Lankan street food, and they've closed down as well. Next to Kotu was the Sugar Bean Cafe. They closed in late October, having been here for eight years. Here's a clip of both Kotu and the Sugar Bean Cafe when they were still open back in March. And now for Savvy Hair Boutique, and this is the only business on this part of Hunter Street that is still open, and they don't seem to be in any rush to move. So now on Bly Street, and you can see the entrance to the 37 Bly Street office building. And to the left of that is a bar that closed in the middle of 2021. And it was replaced by this one. About Time opened in October 2021, just after the last lockdown, and the 37 Blind Street building, which they knew would be knocked down for Sydney Metro. Their motto is, nothing lasts forever. I'll drink to that. Knowing that this space would be demolished suited seven friends that wanted to see if they could work together to run a bar and not fall out before the building closed. And one of their other mottos is, we're here for a good time, not a long time. And on that note, this bar closed its doors on Friday the 23rd of December. Let's see who is still in the 37 Bly Street office building. In March, their occupants list ran to two screens. And by December, it was just one screen. And of those, over 50% had already moved out. 
Next to it, at 33 Bly Street, is the other side of the Martin Place Sydney Metro site that I showed you from O'Connell Street earlier. This will also transfer to Sydney Metro West and become part of the Hunter Street Station East building. And this is the building that used to be here. This was demolished in 2015. This Sydney Metro construction site marks the edge of the future Hunter Street Station East building, which means that this characteristic building at 31 Bly Street is staying. And it's the heritage listed New South Wales Club building which has four storeys. It was designed by William Wardell and was the home of the New South Wales Club from 1886 when it opened until 1969. It's now the home of the Lowy Institute. Hunter Street Station East will have a passageway from Bly Street to O'Connell Street where the station entrance will be. This entrance will lead to two sets of escalators that will be in a switchback arrangement. This will lead to the platform concourse that I covered earlier with lifts and escalators continuing to the island platform below. And as you now know, this platform concourse also goes to the Hunter Street Station West entrance. There will be an underground pedestrian passageway from Hunter Street Station East that will go under Bly Street to the northern concourse of the Martin Place Metro Station that is currently being built. This will link the two stations together and provide a direct connection to the Martin Place Metro platforms, enabling passengers to easily interchange with Metro services to other CBD stations or to destinations north, south and west. And I reckon this interchange will be quick and seamless, with many passengers not realising that they have actually changed stations. Passengers arriving at Hunter Street Station will also be able to interchange with the Eastern Suburbs line, and this will be via these new passageways that are currently being built at the Martin Place Metro Station. Let's add the Martin Place Metro Station South Concourse, which is on Martin Place itself, and you can see how both stations will connect together. So this means that you'll be able to walk from Martin Place to Barangaroo without getting wet, sweaty or sunburnt. Let me show you how this will work. Besides the passageways to the platforms, there will be a more direct unpaid passageway, i.e. outside of the Opal Gates, to take people to the north entrance and then under Bly Street to Hunter Street Station East. You'll then need to tap on to access the platform concourse to Hunter Street Station West, where you would tap off and then use the George Street Tunnel to get to Wynyard Station. It's then via the Wynyard Walk Pedestrian Tunnel to Barangaroo. This underground tunnel opened in 2016 and provides a convenient connection to the Barangaroo South office towers and waterside restaurants. On the east side of the Hunter Street Station platform, the tunnels will gently curve towards the southeast and will end under the domain. This is to allow the line to be extended in the future, potentially to La Perouse with a branch to Cogra. This will also include a crossover cabin, and this will be used by all trains to switch tracks and reverse until the line is extended. So all trains will arrive on the north side of the island platform, and after dropping off passengers, we'll use this crossover line to switch tracks, returning to the south side of the island platform to pick up passengers. Just like at Martin Place and Pitt Street Metro stations, there will be an overstation development that will consist of two high-rise commercial buildings. The one over Hunter Street West will be 51 storeys, and the other over Hunter Street East will be slightly higher at 58 storeys. As you can see, the Hunter Street West Tower will be set back slightly, with smaller buildings in front that line up with Hunter Street and George Street. You can see how the station entrances on Hunter Street and George Street will be incorporated into these smaller buildings, which are likely to be for retail. Also notice how the design of these buildings blends in and complements with the former Skinner's Hotel building. This is how the Hunter Street Station East Tower and surrounding buildings will look. Over on the right is Bly Street, with the Heritage New South Wales Club building just here, and then a new building, and then the passageway that will lead to the station entrance on O'Connell Street. The office tower is also set back from the streets, with lower rise buildings that will probably have retail premises along Hunter Street and Bly Street. So now you know a little bit more about how the new Hunter Street station will work and the buildings that will be demolished to make way for it. So if you enjoyed this video, do give it a like, give it a thumbs up, do leave a comment or question below. I'd love to know what you think and I'll do my best to answer any questions that you have. If you haven't subscribed, please do and also consider joining me on Patreon. There's a link with further details in the description below. So I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I'll see you in the next one soon. Bye for now.